a 70 plus year old elderly woman gets, well, raided by SWAT, okay? It was horrific how they treated her. They now have to pay her damn near $4 million for their insanity. I want to take you back to the original story and give you the, the update. Here it is. Denver Police Department with a search warrant. You cover the door with your hands up. Oh. Do you have anything on you you're not supposed to? Huh? Do you have any guns or a knife? Or no. Oh, no. <laughs> Come sit back here. We're going to tell you what's up. So nobody else is in the house, man? No, nobody else is in the house. Okay, there's a, so they got a search warrant for your house, okay? There was some evidence that they believe is in the house. So I'm gonna walk you over there and we're gonna talk to some detectives, okay? Once we can make some more announcements, just give me a minute and make double check that nobody else snuck in the house on you, okay? Okay. Yep, put up the picture full mass. I will explain to you what happened and give you the update. Ruby Johnson, 78 years of age. She's a grandmother. She has now been awarded $3.76 million in a judgment after her Colorado home was raided and wrongly searched two years ago by a SWAT team in a sting gone wrong. The American Civil Liberties Union of Colorado filed a lawsuit on behalf of Ruby Johnson, a retired US Postal Service worker whose home was the target of a botched raid January 4th, 2022. According to the complaint against two officers, Denver police obtained a, a search warrant for a home in their efforts to locate a stolen truck filled with four semi-automatic handguns, a rifle, a revolver, two drones, $4,000 in cash, an Apple iPhone 11. Now, investigators used Apple's Find My Phone app to pinpoint the location so they could find the truck. You see, if they would have simply Googled an explanation of the app and read it, it's probably three lines. But it says very clearly, hey, we may be off. We may not be accurate in the location, but we're going to be roundabout, close. But you see, you're not supposed to get a warrant based on close. So not only was this a failure, of the SWAT team and the investigators involved, but whatever judge decided to sign the damn search warrant based on an app. There's more. The problem was the app does not track the phone's exact location, only its general vicinity as outlined in the guide for the app itself. So the truck could have been parked at any of the other neighboring homes around Johnson's, yet authorities raided Johnson's home anyway. The complaint notes that Johnson had just gotten out of the shower, was watching television, when she heard someone outside of her house yelling through a megaphone for everyone inside to exit with their hands up, wearing only a bathrobe. Mrs. Johnson opened her door to find several police vehicles, armed men in full military style gear, and a police dog. She was home alone at the time. The truck and its contents were not found at her home. Police used a battering ram to get into her garage, even after she explained how to open the garage door and broke ceiling tiles to search her attic. Now, for those of you who said initially, well, the police just made a simple mistake here. No, they let 
they lacked investigative prowess. Uh, they lacked a systemic approach to something this serious. And then when they realized, okay, this is a woman that's damn near 80, they still decided to break her garage door and break her ceiling tiles. Do you think the truck is parked in the ceiling? Do you think the truck is parked in her roof? What the hell are you all doing? There's more. The vehicle police were looking for it belonged to Jeremy McDaniel. It was stolen from the Denver Hyatt the day before the raid. Two days after they searched Johnson's home, authorities found it six miles away in Aurora. Johnson was so traumatized by the incident that she could not return to her home because of the memories. She stayed with her son in Texas for three months. She was traumatized. The ACLU filed a suit December 2022, accusing Denver police detective Gary Stab of drafting a hastily, uh, hastily pre- uh, prepared bare bones, materially misleading affidavit. There you go. That's the part that the judge signed to secure the search warrant. The complaint stated police executed an unreasonable search and seizure that violated Johnson's constitutional rights and caused her severe physical and emotional distress. You don't say. The jury award was announced on Monday, March 4th. Her lawsuit was filed under a new state bill passed in 2020 that allowed Colorado citizens to finally sue police over constitutional rights violations. Before that law was enacted, People with complaints similar to Johnson's had to turn to the federal courts where their cases were more difficult to resolve due to the element of qualified immunity, police protections. That's according to the AP. The ACLU said Johnson's suit was the first significant case to go to trial after the bill was passed. Now, here's the thing. This is good policy. Bad thing that happened to Ms. Johnson. Uh, We are glad that there's a semblance of justice here and she's okay today. But this helps clean up the madness of police overreach, as well as negligent investigations. Because these detectives, the officers, the judge, everybody involved in harming Ms. Johnson, they are now on notice and those who are outside of the scope of that local vicinity. But this did not happen without the policy changing. Mm -hmm. This is why people are empowered to transform their political reality by transferring their political leaders. Francesca, hell of a thing. It goes back to policy. The right policy is in place. The ACLU was able to get justice for Ms. Johnson. I know, and two years in, right? Like they, yep. it took a while to get this, but I'm glad they saw it through, you know, and took months to actually begin to file this lawsuit, but they did. Here's my thing about all this. Number one, SWAT teams are far overused in this country. We know that, how they've increased in tiny towns that don't warrant this kind of response, right? You're sending in this massive SWAT teams dogs, um, all this kind of weaponry um, for someone who, again, like if it's a robbery, it's a robbery, right? Yeah. Also, like who's running around with that kind of machinery and weaponry in their own truck? Like what about the guy whose truck this is? Let's leave that aside. My thing is beyond the SWAT team, beyond this truck, $3.76 million, who's paying that money? Yeah. It's the people of Colorado. It's the people of this city, of this town. This is taxpayer money. So it's not coming down on the police. They don't have to raise funds for their own mistakes, right? They're not doing bake sales for anything, you know, not doing it for the amount of weaponry we give them. But also when they mess up and they have to have these payouts for civilians who have their constitutional rights violated, not it's us, it's the taxpayers time and time and time again. So it's a step in the right direction. But the real thing is, is like, will there be consequences for the police involved? And then will they have to be the ones to shell out the money? That's right. So um, hail to the null. Uh, they will <laughs> not shell out the money. And this is why I advocate for police officers uh, to have basically malpractice insurance, like a medical doctor or psychologist. Right. Uh, this is getting to be insane for taxpayers to always foot the bill. And remember, this is another way to defund the police. But when police defund the police, there's no issue. Uh, individuals in this community will be the ones that suffer.